This is the acrylic nail, okay, for our skateboard service. Um, everything's gonna come in your bag, ready to rock and roll. So the first thing that you need to do is disinfect your table. So you don't even need to open this up yet. You're gonna grab little disinfected wipes and I'm just using imaginary wipes right now. So I'll pull one out, make sure I close the container. I'm gonna pick this bag up. I'll wipe the table, put the bag down on my clean disinfected table and throw the wipe in the trash. Then I'm gonna empty out the bag's contents. I've got a towel. I've got two Daffin dishes. Okay, I have one alcohol pad that's got a dehydrator white uh, label on it. I've got a little mini buffer. I've got a nail file, it could come in several different sizes. Orange wood stick. I have a mannequin hand with five nails glued onto it, all trimmed down, ready to rock and roll. And then I have one skateboard odorless acrylic kit. Okay, it has to have the manufacturer's wrapping on it. And then it also has a sticker that says, do not open until the test. What does that tell you? Don't open, don't open it until the test. Cause if you do, they will not allow you to use this product because it has to be odorless product, right? Because you're doing this service inside of a building that doesn't have proper ventilation um, for regular acrylic product. So it's gonna be unlike any product that you've ever used ever. Once the bag is empty, you throw it in your trash bag. And remember, if you touch your trash bag at any point, you sanitize your hands. I, I don't have my hand sanitizer right now, so we'll use imaginary hand sanitizer. But we do want to set up our table. There is no specific way to set up your table. So you take your nail towel. One side is fuzzy and one side is smooth and plastic feeling. So put the plastic side down. I am going to put my orange wood stick buffer and nail file together, put my little dehydrator wipe down, and then I'm gonna put my two Dappen dishes over here, kind of off camera, and then I've got my nail or my hand. Now the hand, the fingers need to point toward your body at all times, okay? You're gonna pick one of these nails to sculpt, and I do always like to sculpt the thumb because it's on Thumb Island over here, meaning it's over here by itself, okay? We also always think that we need more product than we do. This being the largest real estate finger, this just kind of makes the most sense for a lot of people, okay? So I do like to do the thumb. Now at this point, I am gonna open this, okay? I know, but it's legal now because I'm here at the test. <laughs> so we'll open this up. My little wrapper is gonna go in the bag. So inside of here is the rest of the items that you'll need. They will open this up actually uh, prior to you actually beginning this. So JK, you won't even open that up. Uh, they will open it and they'll take out your little instruction pamphlet. Inside of here, you'll have your nail forms. You'll have your acrylic brush. You'll have your primer. Okay, it's a little fat lot, uh, uh, bottle. And then you're gonna have this little packet here and this is gonna have your powders and your liquid or your monomers and your polymers. Throw this away and do this out. So you're gonna wanna keep the little glass skinny jar and you wanna keep the little fat glass jar out. Okay, and then you're gonna get two plastic white jars. One is, let me see, one is clear, all right, and one is white. That's your powders. I personally like to use the clear powder because you can see how long your extension is. So we'll go ahead and use the clear one and then I'm not gonna use the white one so I'll save this for personal use. I'll just put that in my trash as well. To continue setting up, I am going to put some product in my Daffin dishes. I'm not gonna fill them halfway because I'm only doing one nail. I don't need a ton of product here. So I put a little monomer in one, seal the container and put it here. Don't throw it away just yet, because what if you get a little oopsies during the test and then it kind of, it spills out and then you're like, ah, what do I do? In the event that you do throw it away, what you would do to retrieve it would be to go into your trash, ew, and then pick it out, sanitize it with a disinfected wipe or disinfect it with a disinfected wipe, put it on the table, then sanitize your hands and pretend nothing happened, okay? Anyway, back to, this so we'll put a little bit of our liquid on the other dappen dish and then seal that jar and put that down i'll move this to the side now i personally don't like to put the product on the towel 
um, simply because if the towel moves, right, then the product kind of tends to spill out, okay? So um, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna sanitize our hands. So we're gonna take our little spray hand sanitizer. Again, this is imaginary, but at the test it will be real. Take the lid off of it, the lid down, you're gonna spray your hands and then you're gonna give the mannequin hand a spray and you're gonna just sanitize. And it's gonna be the most awkward, weird thing you've done, okay? Put the lid back on your sanitizer and put it off to the side. Now we can get the service started. Again, again, the fingers need to point toward you at all times because she is not sitting on your lap or your client, your guest is not sitting on your lap getting a manicure, getting some acrylic nails put on. Um, that's a different kind of place, okay? And that's not where we are. All right, so our first thing after we set up our station is we're gonna pick the nail that we're gonna do. We're gonna pinch the sides down here, bracing the finger, and we're gonna take our orange wood stick and we're gonna push that cuticle back. We're gonna put that stick down. Now we're gonna grab our buffer block and we're gonna buff the shine from the natural nail. Now let's say you buff the nail and then you realize, oops, I forgot to push the cuticle back. You could go back and kind of retrieve that step, but really the point's already gone. So just kind of keep moving forward. As Dory says, just keep swimming, okay? So now we wanna clean up all the little bits and pieces and particles that buffing the nail kind of created. Okay, and we wanna get the nail ready for our primer and for the rest of our product. So what we'll do is we'll take our dehydrator wipe, we'll open this up, throw the wrapper in our trash. I'm gonna wipe the nail. This removes all those little pieces, all the little dust that you created, and it gets it all ready. Now, is it truly gonna dehydrate this? No, it's made of plastic. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna put on our form, so that's gonna be step seven, from your PSI CIB. The forms come in all different shapes and sizes. The forms that come in the state board kit happen to be the rectangle ones. You might see them in like a rounded version or like a much crazier version. Um, this is just as basic as it gets. Okay, there's a bunch of different ways you can put these on. Essentially, you're gonna take this and you're gonna make it form to the finger itself. It's almost like applying lash uh, band lashes uh, where you kind of like loosen them up a little bit before you put them on your eye. So you're going to take this little center sticker out, okay? I just kind of put it right there. Some people kind of brace the back side of their form. I feel it's unnecessary, but if you've seen it, you want to try it, go for it. There is a little perforated line right here. You want to keep that intact. I'm going to peel this um, from the backing here, okay? This is trash, so I'm going to throw this in my trash. And I'm kind of just take it and I bend it a bit, right? And it just kind of loosens it up. Again, it's like when you apply band eyelashes, you kind of, you loosen them up a little bit. It's like stretching before you dance, right? Mm. Maybe not, I don't know. So I'm gonna brace the finger here. I'm gonna come in at a 45 degree angle and I turned her just so you guys could see this a little bit better. I come in at a 45 degree angle, put the finger through the hole of the form I push to the sticker or the form meets the free edge or the base of the finger itself. And then I push up and I want to match the curve of the nail, right? I want to match the sticker to the curve of the nail. So once I get that good curve, I take this non-dominant hand here and I stick the form to the side of the finger. And now I can kind of let go with that. And then I pinch right here and I create this cute little, I call it a little shark fin. It's not, it's not a technical term, right? But it does create this cute little, little shark fin, if you will. I then take the tip of the sticker or the form and I pinch just the very tip of it and that reinforces the arch that you just created, okay? The whole point is that there is no gapping, right? You gotta get it so it focuses. It's not gonna focus, but you can kind of see what's going on. So there's no gapping, right? Now that the form is on the nail, okay, it's nice and snug. What we're gonna do next is gonna we're, we're gonna apply our primer. So that's gonna be the larger glass bottle. It is child safe, so you're gonna push down and turn. Now this guy's got odor, okay, it's stinky. Uh, this is also made to absorb into natural nail plate and you're using plastic. So I like to do a little dry brush application here. So just kind of wipe off some excess product on your towel and then put that dry brush on the nail, and then put the lid back on it. And there you have it. Okay, 
So now we're ready to start forming our beads. So the beads are gonna go in a three-part method. You're gonna do your first bead here on the form itself. The second bead goes on the uh, center of the nail and the third bead will be your smallest and go toward the base. You want the tip of the nail or the extension to be about as thick as a credit card so that when you apply pressure to the nail when you file it, uh, it won't snap off on you. In the event that that happens, pick a new nail, get started over again with the whole process, okay? So the uh, manufacturer is going to have this weird kind of coating on the bristles itself. If you guys ever gotten like a brand new brush, you kind of just need to squeeze it and work it out. And then it's going to fluff out for you. And you'll have some of that like weird glue coating kind of floating in the air. It's, it's lovely. So we're going to come in and we're going to form our first bead. So this brush is super round and it is very absorbent. You wanna create a dry bead here, okay? So you are going to dip your brush into the liquid, into the dappin dish. I personally like to soak it, right? Till it's dripping. And then I go, gosh, that's way too much. So then I give it a good, strong squeegee, right? On the side of the container here, and I hold the container so it doesn't move. Now I'm gonna take and insert just the tip of the brush into the other dappin dish, and you're gonna see when it, when it touches the powder, it really starts to kind of absorb. And then that's when the products kind of come together and create the product that you know as acrylic. When you pull the bead out, you want it to be this like dustier situation. Okay, it's gonna look like a, like a snow cone almost. It's then gonna start to absorb that extra dryness. So you wanna scrape this bead off now this tool you just use to mix it. So see how there's excess product? If you don't clean your brush at this point, your brush is gonna harden and you're gonna have a heck of a time shaping the rest of the nail. So clean the brush. Now some people will go like, you have to go in one direction like this and be all gentle. Like, like we get it, like that's the proper technique here, but they're not evaluating you for that part. This is very effective. Just go back and forth. You don't wanna be like, like one way, the other way, okay? Now I'm gonna come in here and you can kind of see this product has like started to look a little different. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna use like a scooping method to kind of pull up anything that's like melted off to the sides and I'm gonna pat, pat, pat this product out. Pat it out and I'm, I'm forming the extension of the nail here. Any excess product in this brush, any excess liquid in the brush, you wanna remove that. You said you can see the clear one better than the white one? Yeah, like you can see how long you've extended the nail with the clear product versus the white. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can see through it. Now I'm trying to keep that brush parallel to the nail as much as possible. And then any product, you saw that pretty good, right? Like any product that's dipping down below the form line, I scoop it up and then I just kind of push it into place. Now it's gonna stop being so pliable after about 30 seconds. If it continues to stay extremely liquidy, what has gone wrong? Too much liquid. You've got too much liquid going on, okay? Now, the less you touch it, the smoother it will be because it's a self-leveling product. So we just do one nail in 20 minutes. One nail, 20 minutes. I don't think I'm going to be very good at this. You're going to be great. So. You got to hide your face. That's I'm not good at this part. But anyway, it's not pretty, but it's there. All right. Perfect. That's how fast this should set. If it is not setting that fast, your mix ratio is off, okay? So we've got a clean brush. Now, some people are gonna be like, you go back in the liquid, man, you clean your brush. Don't do that. You're just adding more liquid. That's like mm -hmm. trying to put a fire out by throwing gasoline on it. It's not gonna be good, okay? I'm gonna come in and form my second bead the same way that I formed my first one. So again, it's very important. I soak the brush, 
drip, drip, drip. Now that is too much. So then I give it a good squeegee. See how the brush, like the bristles like bent? If you're just doing something very light like this, like you're not getting enough product out. I can guarantee it. Come into your powder, right? And you're just inserting just the tip of the brush. And it's basically one side. Now technically when you move the brush across the powder, you're activating it. But with this weird odorless product, it's kind of nice that you activate it. You start getting that kind of moving. So once again, that's gonna come out. And see how that little powder dropped off of it? That tells me it's dry. Like yeah, like a little gum drop. Yeah. So I can't, I don't just like place it. See how it doesn't come off? Well, it came off, but <laughs> you can you like scrape it off, all right? And then we clean the brush. Again, it's very important. If you're not cleaning, you know, I was thinking of something to rhyme, but it, you know, if you're not cleaning, you're gonna have a hard time. So we come back in and now I'm gonna pat this guy out. I'm gonna overlap onto my first bead just a little bit so that they're all one big happy family. And then this is creating the apex of the nail. Now, State Board is not concerned with our cosmetologist exam about structure of the nail being 100% correct. They are concerned about the safety, the sanitation, and the infection control. What is unsafe is if you get this product all over someone's skin, as that could create a, like a, a contact dermatitis situation or allergic reaction. Now let's say you get some product down into your sidewalls here. Grab that orange wood stick and remove that product immediately before it starts to set up. Scrape it off and then get back to work. You want the nail to become thinner as you get closer to the base, okay? And you're gonna form your third bead, and this is gonna be your smallest bead, okay? And we're all the way up to step 13 in that PSICIB. So we're just gonna take the very tip of the brush, and we're gonna go into that monomer, right? And then I'm just gonna take the very tip of my brush and go into my polymer. It's gonna form a very small bead compared to the other ones baby gum drop and now i'm going to place this one in the cuticle area clean that brush now the whole time here we're patting out the product so first you're going to pat and then i do take this one and i give it a good paint meaning i drag it over the rest of the nail i do this to help with step 14 which is ensuring the smoothness of the product but then I also do it to help create that tapered effect. I did get some in that sidewall again, so I'm gonna come right in immediately and get that product out because nobody wants their skin and their nail to become one, okay? Well, that could be a new trend. <laughs> and, then, and then we're good. Okay, so we wanna let this set. So the product, and at this point I do go back into my liquid and I do clean my brush so that I've got nice clean tools afterwards. So I kind of dance around in there. Squeegee out that liquid. Then I take the corner of my towel here and cover and pull back. I mean, you're gonna go through your trash can at the end. Okay. And then you do store. So you can put this on your table totally fine so the product is gonna be good it's gonna go from being like wet uh, and really shiny looking to being like a really uh, semi matte situation this is what it will sound like when it's set a solid acrylic product if it is not set and again I just put that piece there and, and it is already set Okay. If it's not said, it will not make that noise. It'll be like, stick. <laughs> okay. It tells you again that you've used too much liquid. Okay. So we'll put that down. Now I am going to remove my form. Be gentle, but also stern. Squeeze and pull down. Okay. The squeeze releases it. The pull down removes it. 
Now is when you're gonna remove and kind of break that little perforated line that was in your little shark fin. Again, not a technical term. Peel any excess sticker off and now you've created an extension. But look how crazy the nail looks, right? Look how crazy it looks. <laughs> so if you look at like how crazy the nail looks, like on the side, like it's got some like weird like part that's kind of like melted down. So this is where you're going to take your nail form, which is gonna have your file, take your nail file, it's gonna have a higher grit to it. It's gonna be what we call your workhorse, okay? You're gonna file and shape the sides. And now this is an acrylic product, so you can saw back and forth. If this was a natural nail, you would have to strike a match, okay? And the reason that that is is because it creates friction. So we're pinching the sidewalls down. Now at this point, if um, you like really broke the tip or something, would you have to like restart or? It depends. It, it depends on where it breaks okay. and can you salvage it? Because sometimes you're like, yeah, my attention was a square, but then the corner broke off, so then I made it like an almond or a stiletto or a shank or whatever. So I go side, side, tip, and then I go underneath. And you can file your heart away, just keep your eye on the time. And once you're happy with the overall like silhouette of the nail, then you wanna go in and you wanna start filing the top of the nail, the surface of the nail. And that is the inhibition layer. So it's going to be this like sticky, tacky situation, gummy, right? You can actually scrape it off with your nail like that. But you take your file, I'll show you. It gets all gummy and stuff. Let me see if we can the worst close-ups ever, but it gets all gummy. So you wanna keep filing until it is not gummy anymore. And then if your nail is not the smoothest thing in the world, keep filing until it is, right? It's like blending your makeup or anything. And this is when it's important that it was thick enough so that when you're applying this pressure, it doesn't just snap under the pressure. So then you're gonna have some of this inhibition layer stuck in the sidewalls here. So just take your orange wood stick and you can kind of get some of this product out and kind of clean up the nail. Okay. And you want to be mindful that you're, when you're filing, that you're doing it in a controlled manner and that you're not scraping up the skin all around them. Okay. So this is going to feel kind of rough to the touch. That's when the last step comes into play here. And you're just going to use that little buffer block and you're going to buff until that nail is nice and smooth, like your natural nail is. There we go. So nice and smooth. At this point, you wanna clean up. So I take the hand and I set it to the side on my disinfected table. I am gonna take the excess liquid from my dappin dish. I dump it in the center of the towel which again has a plastic backing so it won't go through. And then I dump the powder right on top of that so it creates this nice little acrylic ball on the inside. I put them together, I put them inside, and I ball that up, and I put that in my trash. Anything else that I don't need, which is literally everything, would go into my trash as well. And I guarantee at this point you touched the trash, so you're gonna go ahead and sanitize your hands one more time. You are finished with the nail. You would raise your hand. Don't raise the mannequin hand, okay? And then they'll come over and they'll check. The variation of this is that as you start to clean up, they might say, candidate, please stop cleaning up your service. And then you would do that st those steps that I just showed you during the end of exam disinfection, 
okay? And that's it, and that's how you do the acrylic nail. Bad close-ups, but there's your end product, okay?